Hello YouTube, this is Southern Wolverine, and welcome back to more Shogun 2 Total War 2v2 multiplayer action. Here's General John San, commanding over a fairly small elite army. In a previous battle I posted, you saw one of my early battles wherein I had a very large rookie force, and now it's sort of the other way around this time. I have a 8 Chevron unit of Imperial, or rather Infantry to Marine, 6 Chevron United States Marines, a 6 Chevron Imperial Infantry, a 2 Chevron Royal Marines, a 2 Chevron Armstrong Gun, and a rookie unit of Red Bears to protect it. My General, and then 4 units of mid-range Yari Key hidden over in this forest. My ally, Mr. Patrick, he also has some infantry to marine, and then he's got a mix of Imperial Infantry, Bokachi, and Shogatai and Katana Kachi. He also has this unit, 6 Chevron Parrot Gun, and his general. He has no cavalry other than his general. Alright, now our opponents, one of them is a traditional general, and he's a number of his units are hidden. So he's got some bow samurai in those woods there, and then a row of Yari samurai, Naginata samurai, his general of course, and I believe he's got a number of troops hidden here in this forest that we can't see right now. In direct opposition to me, Axcha here has an awful lot of these white tiger force. Uh, you know, probably 10 or 12 units of these guys. There's just a ton of them. He also has a few rookie units of Yari Ki. Some Katana Kachi, two units. Bokachi and a single unit of infantry to marine. So let's get this started and see what happens. It was uh, fortunate for me that my opponent here did not have artillery. Uh, I didn't have a lot of expendable units, so artillery strikes on these very expensive foreign marines and well-vetted Imperial infantry would have cost me quite a bit. So my allies moving up through this forest here. Uh, you can see some units of the enemy moving into these trees. So he's basically trying to stay hidden it looks like. And uh, weather the artillery bombardment. And he's got some units that are moving over here. These bow warrior monks that uh, were previously hidden. This is a pretty nasty unit. They got 175 range, good reload skill, good accuracy. They'll, uh, they'll give, you know, even the fall of the Samurai Missile Units a run for their money. Uh, especially with this force to give them some protection. Now the, the foreign Marines shoot them up. But these guys do have excellent morale, 14, so they'll stay in a fight for a long time. Now unfortunately for me, my artillery, the only really unit that's worth shooting at is this infantry to marine directly in front of me. Uh, shooting out these white tiger forces is really not going to gain me a whole lot. So I'm um, at this point just moving my infantry out. And I'm going to gradually push up on them. Now you'll notice that both the old guard infantry to marine and the always faithful United States Marines both have 150 range. And that's going to become important when these 150 range Bokachi think they can come up and shoot at my elite units with impunity. Uh, my ally has also drawn up into a line with his missile infantry in front, his bow supporting, and his melee troops behind. See, he actually has these melee troops. I have elected not to take any melee other than my cavalry. And his parrot guns were bombarding these guys in the forest, but they're now hidden, so his guns are essentially silent for the time being. So 
So here we, we have another one of these matchups of small numbers of quality troops versus just large quantities of low quality infantry. And played well, his numbers here could give me a lot of trouble. So this is something I have to approach carefully. So he's uh, now pulled out his second unit of Bokachi. And he's going to begin to approach me with them here momentarily. And he's going to approach with the intent of using their additional range to, to skirmish with me and reduce my, my numbers here. Because every hit he gets on one of these guys, for example, this is a very expensive unit of infantry to marine. So every one of these guys that he kills is, is going to be a victory for him. Now, I'm, I'm going to try to keep my cavalry hidden for as long as possible and, and try to surprise him. Uh, now, if I were him, I would suspect that there's cavalry. I generally just assume that the enemy have cavalry somewhere, even if he can't see it. So if it's hidden, I mean, I like to hide it, so I, I assume that they have cavalry and are hiding it. Just because then if they, in fact, don't have it, then I will be pleasantly surprised later. So I'm, I'm being a little cautious with my small force. Also, I want to bring up my Armstrong guns into this space here. And if I can, I want to use these guns to whittle down his one elite unit, which is those infantry to marine there. And I want to force him to come to me, because if I can get first volleys, that's going to give me a head start on his numerically superior infantry. And honestly, I spent a lot of points on this Armstrong gun, and I wanted to do something. Otherwise, I'm just giving him an advantage by not using what I took. Uh, the downside, of course, of the artillery is that it sort of ties me to one spot. I have to kind of defend it. Uh, I don't really like to do that. In this case, me and my ally, I talked about it beforehand. He took the parrot guns, I took the Armstrong guns, and we were going to try to force these guys to come out to us and so far these guys aren't taking the bait they're willing to sit back and weather the artillery you know and, and this guy in particular extra just simply has numbers so unless I kill his important troops which you see I'm trying to do here hit his infantry to marine uh, my artillery could fire every run they've got into these white tiger force and, and not make a huge difference even if I took out three units of them these guys simply aren't very expensive you see their stats are unimpressive their morale is only four reload 15 accuracy 15 they're just not much to get excited about but deployed in waves uh, used to outnumber me if you move the number of them to the flank they could you know put enough fire onto my units to to become a problem so, I don't know if he did this intentionally, I'm going to assume that he did, because this is an excellent spot for these guys. They're kind of down in this little, you know, dry riverbed. So these shells have to come in at exactly the right angle to hit them. So I wasn't able to do a lot of damage with my artillery, so I kind of gave up on it and just started shooting at the Bokachi who were coming out to skirmish with me. I didn't want them coming out and shooting at these 150 or these 125 range units. However, he's brought them out against my two 150 range units. So you see these guys are just being devastated by fire from the infantry to marine and from the US Marines. Also, Axtra is advancing and you'll notice that his ally on the other side, uh, Jan Ross Chua, is still staying back in the woods and playing a little more conservatively. Now these, these mass formations of white tigers, uh, if I had this army, what I probably would have done is deployed them in like two waves and with long frontages. He's got them kind of in these deep formations so they don't have many guns forward. So they're just, even though he's got more numbers, he's still massively outgunned by me. He did get a charge off of my infantry to marine, but now my cavalry has revealed itself and is counterattacking, and is superior to his cavalry. The enemy has hidden units, sir. You see, fairly quickly beating these guys back. So here we got the uh, another installment of the cavalry fight over here. Uh, 
these guys. One unit's already planted. They're just... My units are bad at his arm. That's really all there is to it. They're just not able to hold up in that fight. So the first wave of Axtra's attack has now been driven back. Some of the units have routed and come back. Other units he's just pulled back to some semblance of safety. Uh, my guns are still firing. Uh, it'd be nice to shoot his elites. Uh, where did they end up even? Here they are. See, they're, they're still a good unit, even though they're not vetted to the Marine. Marine. Now, as they're coming at my Marines, I do have a range advantage. And now my artillery also is shooting at these guys. Because these are really the only good target for my artillery. Everything else is really expensive enough to be working. So he's really trying to get numbers on this portion of my force, but in doing so, he's exposed his flag to my pretty good front line here. Certainly these Royal Marines are good, and these guys, these Stormtrooper and Real Infantry are better than not. I mean, 70 to 9 reload, 55 accuracy, they route these two White Tiger Force pretty quick. Perhaps if he deployed them as a holding force in a wide formation, they would have been able to hold out longer. Uh, but me shooting down, down the flank of those guys pretty much broke them right away. So you see, none of these, these White Tigers with their low, low morale simply are not able to hold up very long. Meanwhile, the cavalier are pressing. His infantry to marine got broken. Five mile longer range fire, plus a cavalry assault now, trying to push in on these guys. So I'm, I'm really pressing at him. I'm trying to catch his general in this fight, too, and I am able to get him drawn into a melee fight. So now he's even wavering. Meanwhile, Patrick has been drawn into a massive fight over here. Uh, general Strua sort of waited for him to come out, just a melee rush to come in the head. These Imperial infantry are actually holding up reasonably well to this. And he's, uh, I mean, my general, ally Patrick sir. is now pouring men, uh, his melee troops, into this fight as well. In the attempt to, you know, turn the tide and keep his missile troops in the fight. You see, so he's got these Irish Guard Katanakachi coming in to do a rear assault on these guys. So that's, it's sort of a mess over there. But basically, Axtra's force now has been completely destroyed by my elite units. Uh, now this unit of bow warrior monks is shooting at my red bear infantry, my unvetted red bear infantry. And you see, they're actually doing quite a bit of damage. So I'm losing, you know, 8 to 10 guys on each volley. Which, you know, it's not to be ignored. The only downside for these bow warrior monks is it's only a 100 man unit. And these missile units out here that I've got, these gun units, are all 200 men. And now the Royal Marines are going to start Victory shooting in on them as well. Sword, so these boat warrior, warrior marks are going to fight for a long time, but as a slowing, detaining force, they're really not going to be able to slow me down all that much. And now I've got my cavalry even sweeping around the backside in an attempt to help out Patrick, who's very, you know, intensely engaged along this whole front. So now you notice I still have most of these guys left, even. So the cavalry very decisively won their battle. Now these bow warrior monks. That was just too much for them. Too many missile units shooting and they can't take it. So now my infantry is going to come and try to join in this fight. So at this point it's only a matter of time. We've definitely got an advantage now. Now this uh, Jan Ross Chua's army has mostly lost its melee troops, or they're still engaged out to the front. There's still a few of them fighting out here. So I'm just going to bring my cavalry in and, and just wreck his bow units that are still fighting. I mean, and this isn't even fair. These guys cannot fight a cavalry unit. So that's pretty much all she wrote for that one. Okay, here we are at the battle results screen. Uh, I deployed the fewest men. I had a lot of elite troops. Uh, my direct opponent, Axtra, had deployed quite a few troops. Of course, most of them were those white tiger force. And there's a way to fight a numerically inferior but far more elite force 
Uh, he simply wasn't able to do it. He could have attacked in waves. He could have tried to draw a larger front than I did using his larger numbers. He could have sent some of his troops over to support his ally and try to break my ally. And then just leave men in front of me to slow me down. He could have put his one elite force, those infantry to marine, way out on the flank, try to use them to turn in while his, you know, chaff units just hold my front. Uh, he wasn't able to do any of those things. Those kind of five or six deep missile formations weren't very effective because it meant that only about 20% of the unit could actually fire and they were shooting at my spread out units of elite infantry almost half of my units were able to shoot at him um, so they, they simply couldn't take that my guys have better morale better aim they're just superior in every conceivable way and he tried to take them head on and, and of course it didn't work very well so let there be a lesson just because you have numbers you, you can't simply charge into an enemy army and, and expect to succeed it just doesn't work that way So unsurprisingly, my infantry to marine old guard and my always faithful United States Marines between them had you know over 900 kills. So he spent quite a bit of time trying to challenge them on that flank. Uh, presumably, he was trying to turn my flank, and the cavalry even came in and charge, which is why the old guard had quite a few casualties. Uh, my RQ also did pretty well. The Armstrong guns did okay, and they helped break those units of uh, that one unit of infantry to marine. Who had very little effect on the battle, thanks in part to the longer range of my infantry to marine and the morale effect from the Armstrong guns shooting at them. So now if we go down to his army down here, you see these old White Tiger Force <sighs> suffered extremely high losses and accomplished very little. Even his infantry marine suffered over 75% casualties and accomplished nothing. Uh, I, I hate to pick on him, but there's a way to use this army that would have given me trouble and it simply didn't happen in this battle so in any case good game to everyone thanks for watching and please like comment subscribe this and this is southern wolverine signing off